This is the Sea Glider by Startup Regent. It's kind of a cross between an electric seaplane, a hydrofoil, and a vessel that uses something called wing in ground effect. Don't worry, I'll explain that later. Now this tech could give you a new way to rapidly commute between coastal cities, and to try and achieve that aim, Regent tell me they have been conducting tests and taking pre-orders to the tune of $7 billion. But where you see a sea glider flying could give you a good indication of how successful Regent might be. And right now, this doesn't quite look like this. And that's just one reason why it's not quite there yet. So as always, we're going to look at where Regent is now, where it wants the sea glider to be, and then examine what it needs to do to get there. But let's start with where it wants to be. The idea behind Regent's electric sea glider is to develop a kind of new mode of transport based on combining existing concepts to create a zero emission way of carrying up to 12 passengers up to 180 miles for around $60 per passenger. Here's Regent's CEO, Billy Talheimer. We're talking about, you know, Hawaii, the Caribbean, uh, Japan, New Zealand, right? These are sort of key markets that are coastally distributed. Now, you may be wondering why Regent is trying to invent a whole new mode of transport to replace planes and ferries when there are already companies trying to develop electric planes and ferries. Well, it's because that wing in ground effect can extend your range. When we fly low over the surface of the water, we're flying on a cushion of air. This is what pelicans fly on or other birds at sea flying low to the water. It's aerodynamically advantageous, and so that's why you get these range extensions. When the vessel is in a harbour, it deploys a hydrofoil to provide increased manoeuvrability at lower speeds. Interestingly, the Sea Glider is considered a maritime vessel, and so is regulated by maritime agencies and not the Aviation Authority. That could mean skipping airport security, but Billy told me he also believed that it would give a faster path to certification. The company also said that the Viceroy could be applied to other maritime roles, like oil rig maintenance, cargo transfer, and naval operations. And while Regents say their starting range will be 180 miles, the company plans to extend the range of the Viceroy to 500 miles when next generation batteries become available. That's LA to San Francisco, that's Boston to New York, uh, that's Seoul to Jeju in South Korea. Remember this, we'll be coming back to it later. So where are Regent right now? Well, in September, the company conducted their first test flight using a quarter scale model of the Sea Glider. Regent also told me they'd received some 400 pre orders, half of which were from Mesa Air Group, with others coming from small airlines like Southern Airways Express and some European ferry companies. While some of these pre orders come with firm deposits, others are just an intention to buy. And Hawaiian Airlines have invested in Regent, though they haven't placed an order yet. And to try and make sure it can actually deliver sea gliders, Regent is developing a manufacturing facility in Rhode Island, where it hopes to begin by making 12 gliders a year with the help of a multi-million dollar state incentive. So if they've conducted tests, received orders, and secured a grant to build a factory, why is sea glider not quite there yet? Well, firstly, they still need to build and test a full-scale version of the sea glider, and then prove that it can safely carry passengers. Secondly, the company has to transition from proof of concept to full-scale manufacturing. And right now, that's something that many electric transport startups have struggled with. And then there's those 500 mile range ambitions. See, to get from 180 miles of range, which is still hypothetical for now, to 500 miles, you'd need a 175% increase in your battery capacity. Now, recently I've been chatting to some battery manufacturers and they told me they're expecting an increase of just 30% in capacity by 2027. So if that battery increase doesn't emerge, it will limit the routes that Sea Glider can operate in. Not only will that exclude that lucrative LA to San Francisco route, but it will also keep them in direct competition with other electric aircraft, which are expected to have a range of around 150 miles, but can fly over land. Our business model is not based on those batteries coming to fruition. We have customers today within this 180 mile range that can use existing batteries. So for Sea Glider to take off, Regent is going to need to build, test, and certify a full scale version of its vessel, pivot from testing to manufacturing, and finally begin delivery of some of those pre-orders. If the company achieves all that, then don't be surprised if you see these things out in the wild conducting some short journeys. But as for the company's ambitions of getting you from LA to San Francisco, well, for now, you might be better off getting a normal plane, as you could be waiting quite some time for that battery technology to develop. 